Illusions, delusions, confusions. Those are the three words for this movie. But seriously though, it's a brilliant thriller. And they say anime is for kids. Hi, Watch Anime Recap here. Today, we'll talk about a 1997 psychological crime anime movie called Perfect Blue. Before we start, be sure to like the video, drop a comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you dig the summary to support the channel. Famous idol Mima is rumored to be announcing her retirement from the girl group Cham at a concert. Naturally, the target audience, young, rough-looking guys, are disappointed. Meanwhile backstage, the girls feel the pressure of their upcoming show. While performing, a creepy-looking dude named Memania stares at Mima from the stage side. Afterward, he sees some troublesome guys and confronts them for disrespecting his paramour. A fight breaks out while Mima attempts to announce her retirement. Welp, what you're seeing are simps in their natural habitat. Mima interferes with the fight, so the leader of the troublesome guy gang attempts to throw a can at her. However, Memania stops him and makes him leave. Mima thanks him with a smile, and Memania reciprocates. Creepily, of course. I think I know the first thing he's gonna do when he gets home. Finally, one of the girls announces that Mima is retiring since Mima couldn't do it herself. Although they're shocked, they listen to Mima's last song performance. Memania is definitely not taking Mima's retirement very well. Mima goes through the wild crowd and gets a love letter. She goes home, and as she enters her apartment, she feeds her fish and tears down the cham poster on her wall. Later, she reads the love letter in a pink envelope. It claims that the person is looking inside Mima's room, and they've posted a link about it. Mima feels uncomfortable about this. However, her phone suddenly rings. Mima's mom asks her about her day, and Mima tells her that she's retiring from singing to pursue acting. Suddenly, Mima gets interrupted by a call from a different line. She speaks to them, but nobody's talking. Later, Mima receives fax. Yes, people still do fax here. The fax is full of words. Traitor. Mima is startled by this. I think the threat only works through fax, you know. I can't imagine doing this through messenger. You'll just end up in the message requests. Later on the set, Mima prepares for her scene. She hands the pink envelope letter to Rumi, her manager. However, she just yawns at this. Rumi explains what the link is about. Oh man, she's explaining the internet. Some of y'all watching right now weren't even born when this movie came out. The actors go through the scene while Mima watches. She adores Ochi Eri, the actress. Mima's scene comes up and she runs to do it. Although she's nervous, Mima only has one line to deliver. Tadokoro, Rumi's boss, checks up on them. While she's in the spotlight, Mima suddenly feels anxious. Meanwhile, Shibuya, the scriptwriter, and the station boss Tejima arrive on set to bring fan letters to Eri. One of the letters in a pink envelope isn't for Eri, however. Ooh, foreshadowing. Later, Tadakoro kisses up on Tejima and Shibuya so they would give more lines to Mima. Tejima gives Tadakoro the pink envelope, a fan letter for Mima. When the scene starts, a gunshot is heard. The pink letter explodes in Tadakoro's hand, causing him to lose consciousness. Mima reads a piece of the letter which says that the explosion is only a warning. However, the next time will be the real thing. Imagine if the letter exploded in Mima's face instead of Tadakoro's hand. The letter reads, It's only a warning. While Mima's laying on the ground dead, it'd be one of those mission failed successfully kind of things. In her apartment, Rumi sets up Mima's computer and signs her up for this strange thing called the internet. Mima is concerned about the previous events. However, Rumi assures her that it was just a prank, bro. Yo, that, that was a real ass explosion. I'd be crapping my pants if someone pranked me with that. Later, Rumi teaches Mima how to use the internet. Soon, Mima checks the Mima's room link and sees a website dedicated to her daily activities. At first, she laughs at it, but soon, she discovers that someone knows the intimate details of her life. Jesus, who needs sleep tonight anyway? <laughs> Later, Mima does the scene with Eri. Meanwhile, Rumi and Tadakoro discuss Mima's future as an actress because being a pop star apparently didn't make enough money. Later, getting off the train, Mima gets a panic attack and runs outside. As she enters the building, fans still greet her, however, she ignores them. Mima enters the elevator and sees a torn newspaper article of the troublesome guy who was in a recent hit-and-run accident posted on the elevator. As the elevator closes, Mima sees Memania staring at her. Mima enters the office and learns that Cham has now entered the top charts, something they hadn't achieved when she was still a member. 
Mima kinda reminisces about her time with Cham, but Rumi interferes with her daydreaming to tell her that she has more lines for the show she's in. While Mima is shooting, Memania videotapes her. Seriously though, aren't there any securities here? Meanwhile, Tadakoro successfully lobbies an additional scene for Mima. However, Shibuya writes it as a nope scene. In the meeting, Rumi vehemently protests against this while Tadakoro is convinced that this will make Mima easier to sell as an actress. And so, Mima agrees to do the scene. Rumi, however, is concerned about Mima's decision. While on the train home, Mima gets startled by a vision of herself as an idol, protesting against the nope scene. While Mima films the strip scene in a pretend club, Memania stares at her from a distance. Suddenly, in the scene, she gets gang noped. Oh, Jesus Christ. And they say anime is for kids. Suddenly, the scene is stopped and the actors have to hold their position. Rumi cries and walks out while Tadakoro hides his face in shame. Holy cowbells, this anime is hella dark. While still doing the scene, Mima reminisces about her time as an idol. After the shooting, Tadakoro treats Mima to dinner for her hard work. Meanwhile, Memania stares at them from a distance. Mima gets home all cheery from her nope scene. However, she sees that all her fish are dead. Mima breaks down and breaks her stuff. Mima releases her pent up feelings because, hey, she didn't actually want to do the scene. She just didn't want to disappoint the people who had expectations for her. Suddenly, she hallucinates again. And the fish are actually alive? What? Meanwhile, Memania updates Mima's room. Mima begins to do interviews as the show's ratings go up. Old fans talk trash about her, while Memania seems broken up about it. At night, Mima reads through her website, and it claims that she's asking for help because she's being uh, forced to do the nope scene. Mima protests this. However, she begins hallucinating again. She sees old Mima telling her that nobody likes her anymore because she's a filthy actress. Mima is in denial about this. Meanwhile, Shibuya parks his car in the underground lot. He feels like he's being followed. As he opens the elevator, a radio playing Mima's song appears. Soon, he gets killed. Take note, scriptwriters. Try to do your best not to write a nope scene for a super idol with legions of simps. Meanwhile, Mima is in the car with Tadakoro. Over the radio, she learns about Shibuya's death. Apparently, he got wrecked in the face with a sharp object multiple times. Holy cowbells. Mima starts to worry, but Tadakoro assures her it's nothing. Uh, I don't know, man. The uh, guy who got wrecked was literally the nope scene's writer. Why are you all so chill about this? Suddenly, Mima hallucinates again and hops out of the car. Later, Mima is in a photo shoot with a supposedly pervy photographer. Meanwhile, Cham performs to a full crowd. Among them is Memania. While Mima locks herself in the bathroom, she hallucinates and sees her former self. At night, Mima feels angry about the shoot. It is later revealed that she was asked to do an entirely nude shoot by the pervy photographer. Later, Memania concludes that Mima is an imposter and promises to get rid of her. Meanwhile, Mima is filming again with Eri when suddenly, she sees Memania and the scene is cut. The rain pours. While on break, Tadakoro takes Mima to see the other two members of Cham doing a radio show. However, after seeing them, she also sees her former self doing the radio show. Mima panics, runs away, and tries to chase her former self. Ooh, that's kind of poetic. Eventually, she reaches outside the building and almost gets hit by a truck. However, the next thing she knows, she's in her bedroom. Suddenly, Rumi visits Mima in her apartment. As she's talking to Rumi, Mima suddenly gets transported to the shooting scene with Eri. And now, even I'm confused. Mima sees Memania and does the scene again. Suddenly, she wakes up in her room again. And I'm just as confused again. Rumi visits her again, and the two eat cake. Rumi tells her that she was also there yesterday, but Mima can't distinguish reality from work anymore. She breaks the cup in her hand and injures herself. Mima slowly becomes obsessed with Mima's room. At the photographer's house, his door rings. It's the pizza delivery guy! Hooray! Suddenly, pizza guy starts stabbing the pervy photographer and eventually kills him. Oh hey, it's Mima who killed him. Suddenly, Mima wakes up in her apartment again. The phone rings and it's Tadakoro, frantically warning her that the photographer was killed in cold blood. Oh, so now Tadakoro's concerned. Sheesh, man. Internet Explorer reaction much? Mima cries as she sees blood on the clothes in her drawer. She realizes that she's killed the photographer. 
Suddenly, her door rings and reporters try to get her opinion on the matter. Just reporter things. Later, Mima is in the shooting again, and she's supposed to do a scene where she killed someone. Wow, parallelism much? Suddenly, Mima faints from seeing the fake murdered person. She wakes up in her room again and starts hallucinating. Oh no, she's in the shooting again. Eri's character, a psychiatrist, diagnoses Mima's character as having a dissociative identity disorder caused by trauma. In the show, Mima's character is the murderer, and she only assumed the identity of her sister. The final scene is finished, and everyone sets on cheers. Mima is confused AF. The show Doublebind has officially finished filming. While everyone applauds, Mima is still confused. Mima meets Eri in the hallway and confuses her with her psychiatrist character. Suddenly, she sees Memania. He tries to nope her and threatens her with a knife. However, she manages to kick him away and escape. Unfortunately, Memania catches her and throws her through a prop wall. While Memania ties her feet, Mima manages to reach for a hammer and hit him in the head, successfully killing him. Mima is shocked by what she did. Suddenly, the scene is cut and everyone applauses. Okay, am I the only one having psychosis here? Later, Rumi finds Mima in the hallway with her clothes torn. Mima tries to show Memania's body to Rumi. However, when they get to the area, Memania is gone. As Rumi drives Mima home, she falls asleep. The next thing she knows, she is in her room again and everything's clean. While Rumi is in the other room, Mima calls Tadakoro. Meanwhile, Mima's fish are all alive. Tadakoro's phone rings, but he's dead, along with Memania. Mima sees that the fish are alive and that the poster was not taken down after all. Suddenly, Mima sees her former self again. However, in the reflection, she sees Rumi, wearing former Mima's dress. Former Mima tries to kill Mima with an ice pick. However, Mima manages to choke her. She transforms into Rumi. Rumi manages to plunge the ice pick into Mima's shoulder. She bleeds as she tries to run away. Mima jumps from the balcony, while Rumi in the former Mima form follows her. In the struggle, Mima tries to knock some sense into Rumi. However, she's still former Mima. Former Mima chases Mima, who screams for help. Mima gets caught and gets stabbed with an umbrella. Mima struggles to escape, while former Mima breaks the glass behind her and then corners her. Mima removes former Mima's wig and reveals Rumi who frantically tries to get the wig back. In doing so, she accidentally stabs herself with a broken glass. Rumi bleeds on the hallway and transforms into former Mima again. Suddenly, Rumi is about to get isekai but Mima cock blocks her and pushes her out of truck way. Not today, truck not today. They both faint on the hallway as the driver calls for an ambulance. Later, Mima visits Rumi, who's now in a psychiatric hospital. The doctor tells her that Rumi still rolls back into her dangerous persona. Mima tells the doctor that she's thankful for Rumi, because the experience taught her to be who she is today. As she exits the hospital, two gossiping nurses whisper and wonder if it was Mima, the now famous actress, who they just saw. They conclude that she's just a lookalike. Mima gets into her car and removes her shades. Yeah, you know that CSI theme? She smiles at the rearview mirror and asserts that this time, she's the real thing. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.